The Small Business Show, episode 228 for Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include thealternativeboard.com slash SBS and textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll tell you why you want to visit those URLs in a little bit. For now, here, as usual, in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you doing, man? I'm good. You know, crazy, but that's, we say that every time. If I went back and like, yeah, if there was something that, that chopped out all the stuff that was the same between every episode that we did. Yeah, that'd that, be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have to make it, we'll make a pact. We can't talk about the weather and right. we can't say we're busy because those are two. <laughs> those are two <laughs> givens. That's right. Easy to fall back on. Cause, that's you right. Know, that's right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah. uh you know, I, I love doing the show each week and it's funny is we usually connect and and talk like a half an hour bef uh, before like, oh, we're going to record it X. And we're like, well, I got to give myself an extra half hour to catch up. Right. All right. That, all that stuff, which is which is awesome. Uh, and, and you know, the thing I, one of the things I, I love about doing the podcast is, you know, the interaction we get from people being able to talk with you each week. But I I have this feeling that we're. And, I, and I'm not going to say at the beginning because you've been doing it for, you know, 14, 15 years, but certainly there's a huge uptick in popularity of podcasts in the last, I guess, would you say two years, maybe? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen a couple of plateaus. There was there was one that started maybe five years ago and then okay. definitely again in the last two years. Yeah. And and yeah. just to rewind a little. Yeah. You can say we're at the beginning. I It is. Like if I ever convince myself that I know what I'm doing, uh, that's that's a bad day. Like, it, right, it, right. It, right. Well, I do you kind of feel like it's mind. It, yeah. Yeah. Everyone that I talk to uh, and I talk to a lot of people, but everybody who I mentioned, you know, podcasts, they all are like, oh, what, here and boom, they, you know, where is it? I want to subscribe and, they, you know, immediately connect with their, their podcast app and they know what's going on versus, you know, even a few years ago when we first started this, they were like, well, oh, podcast, is that like a radio show? Is that, you know, this kind of thing? So, uh, you know, and, and I was looking up some st statistics uh, this morning because it's going to lead into what we're going to talk about today. But, you know, over 51 percent of the population in the U.S., uh, says they, you know, they've listened to a podcast, 31% of them in the last month, you know, and uh, 62 million people listen to podcasts each week. So that's, those are some big numbers. It's crazy. Um, and that's, yeah. that's uh, Tom Webster at Edison Research who pulls all that stuff together. That dude, he has been here in the podcast world since like day one. And thank goodness for it because he's been tracking yeah. all this stuff. Right. Oh, so it's we, killer. we actually have data back to the beginning, which is you know, unheard of in most industries. Yeah, it's powerful. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Powerful. And, and yeah. The, the thing it's I love about it is, you know, it, there's the, there's such an opportunity in very, very niche audiences. And I've said this before. I didn't come up with this quote, but I, I do love it. You know, the riches are in the niches and uh, really kind of narrow casting, you know, there are over 750,000 podcasts out there and most of them are, are niche based covering very specific topics, which is, yeah. which is awesome. And I think that this niche opportunity or niche, however you want to say it, uh, it it's a great opportunity for your small business and for hosting your own podcast. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the small business show. Sounds good, man. Yeah. 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 That's something that's actually something I've never done. Right. I mean, I right. I've hosted a, many podcasts, but they're all to to inform and, and be their own thing, not the mouthpiece for a, uh, you know, for a, a business that's not yeah. in the business of podcasting. Yeah. A podcast. exactly. Well, and I think that's a, a really good point to bring up is for your podcast to be successful, I think for your small business, it does need to inform. It does need to, uh, you know, add value similar to, you know, there's this 80, 20 rule or I'm not so sure I agree with that, that split anymore, but on social media, you know, you'll often see, Oh, 80% of your posts should just be, 
uh, adding value, informing, not talking about your product or service, and then 20% you should be trying to sell. Right. Um, we, you know, so I think it's a similar thing with your podcast is, yeah, you want to inform and, and talk about what you are an ex- expert at, right? And certainly if you're in business, you're an expert at something. Hopefully. Right. Uh, right. And, Maybe and, you're like us. You're just an expert at failure, which is. What <laughs> yep, we, so, yeah. And that's OK. Because that's how yeah. we've, we've turned that into a business, too. You know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so I think most most successful businesses are that. But that's a whole different yeah. show. Yeah. That's well, right. that's that's a great. And I have that on my list. So first, we'll, we'll, let, I thought we talk about the why. Why I think that any small business can benefit by doing their own podcast. Um, and first, I think, you know, it's a new way to connect with your existing and your and potential customers. You know, not everyone is going to read your blog posts. Not everyone is connected with you on social media. And there's some great discovery by having your p- content up on these podcast networks, the Apple, you know, the podcast directory, um, you know, via iTunes, which is you know, going away, but it'll be just a new podcast app, Google, uh, you know, play Spotify, all those things are, are free to upload your uh, podcast to. It's true. And I I think it's important. And one more way to get your company name out there, you could have your company name at the end of each episode of the podcast that you do. And I, I think it's relatively easy and inexpensive. And I, I, I couldn't think of a reason not to do it. Now, I think there's some arguments against it. like, well, I know I'm not comfortable talking or whatever it is, but uh, we could certainly overcome those. And, uh, you know, we talk about creating your own reality and writing your own story here all the time. And I think that you just have to find a way that works for you. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's one of your employees or maybe it's right. you and and someone else. I, I don't think I would have started this, uh, the, the small business show on my own. But, you know, I reached out to you and then you brought in a whole level of expertise uh, and we combined up to something that I think is, you know, we're in episode 228. So something's something's, something's working. Sort of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Something, something's yeah, working. yeah. No. And I, I am a big fan of uh, of doing shows with with a co-host. Uh, I started Mac Geek yeah. that way and it was very intentional, much like you said for you, you know, you didn't want to start it alone. I knew, thankfully, there were a couple of assumptions I made. Several of them were just dead wrong. But one was that consistency mattered. And it turns out I was that that yeah. one I was right on. Yeah, and that's I knew important. that in order that the great way to guarantee myself consistency was to have essentially an accountability partner. And sure. that person is my co-host. Right. So if I commit yep. to that person that, yes, I'm going to be here on Sunday at 8 p.m. or Tuesday at 10 a.m., whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Then, sure, either one of us can change, but it requires coordinating with this other person, not saying at 730 on Sunday, you know what? I'm just going to have another beer and I'll be. Yeah, sure yeah. Whatever. You're right. You, you know, yeah. like it, it it requires. OK, I need to fess up to this other person that I'm going to I need to change the schedule. And certainly it happens. Right. But but far less often than just like, hey, you know what? No one will know if I just stay on the couch like that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. no, I agree. I agree yeah. with you 100 uh, percent, you know, and uh you know, it's like the gym partner, right? We, yeah. you, that story I've told here a few times where, you know, you hand the other person your gym bag uh, for the next time because, you know, wow, I got this person's, you know, gym bag. If we're going to the gym, <laughs> I have to go because they won't have their stuff. Because so, they won't have their stuff. Think, yeah. yeah exactly. No, yeah. it's right. It's that it's that exact uh, that kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. It works yeah. out great. No, it's, it's good. So yeah. And, and I think, you know, it is relatively easy and expensive. We'll post some links in the show notes with some articles on tips, how you can get started. Uh, the barriers to entry to start a podcast are uh, very, very low. And again, you're already an expert at something. Nobody knows your business, your niche, your market, uh, your product, your services like you do. And the other thing is people want to hear from you. You may not think they do. That's I the hardest thing to learn. Yeah. 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 I guarantee you after doing this show for three years, I talked to him. Oh, I listened. I li- did this. I listened to you guys here. It's all, you know, it's great. People want to hear from you and it doesn't matter how, you, you know, don't worry about the size of your audience. Just, just get going and things will happen. And, and especially if you're a small business, it, it doesn't matter. So if you create this, uh, 
it, you know, this, this content, you can feature it on your website. You can get it transcribed and turned it into blog posts. You can create, you know, people come to your website. They can see this. Oh, listen to our founder. Listen to this. Listen to that. Um, it, it's, 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 I think it's just a really excellent new way to, to reach people. Um, well, yeah, but again, we, we, I, um, when we started Mac observer 20 plus years ago now, we decided, oh, we need to be like the New York Times and in that we need to not be uh, not have individual personalities. We need this this, you know, this website to be its own thing and it needs to be professional and all of that. And and this was a huge, huge mistake for us. Thankfully, there weren't a ton of other websites around. So we were able to survive uh, long enough to realize, no, no, what people actually want is to attach themselves to a personality because if, if you're just yeah. this, this bland thing that reports great news and, and great reviews and all of that, but if there's no humanity attached to it, then it's tough for other people to attach to it as well. It'll just become a, a thing and you get a bunch of drive bys, but no one that says, Oh, I want to go and I want to read what Brian Chaffin has to say. Like, and, and so Brian sure. needs to be allowed to be Brian, you know, and, and on the show, you need to be you. And, and that's a great thing for your business. Uh, you know? Right. Yeah. And so. if you don't want to be you and you have somebody in your organization that's got a very outgoing personality or has some have them on there with you. Right. And or have them do it. And you can be the guest. Right. right. If you're the founder, you can come on the show and, uh, you know, and the, the, the key is, is don't think of that. Oh, nobody wants to hear about this. They do want to hear about it because it is interesting. Just think about when you go out and you meet other people and you're at an event or something and you start talking about your business most people are like, Oh, what do you do? How does that work? And that, that people are interested. So, uh, don't, don't forget that. Yeah. Don't forget um, it. That's it. Yeah. 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 And then the other question I get when, you know, cause I've, I've talked to a few companies and about doing this thing is they say, well, what, what, what do we talk about? You know, what, are, what, what top, what are we going to discuss here? And, uh, I think that again, people love stories. So I think it's great to have, a good section of your uh, podcast, it be all about your story and how you got started, you know, why you started the company, um, interesting facts about your business or your market, uh, you know, this kind of thing, and maybe barriers you overcame to be successful. Um, you can even do like Dave and I do. We talk about mistakes a lot and how we screwed up here and it led to this and, and uh, that kind of thing. So, and, and ask other people what to talk about. Get get ideas from your employees and things like that. There's definitely lots of stuff to talk about. You can break it up into little snippets so you don't have to have, you know, a show all about one thing. Um, there's plenty of stuff. Yeah. And I would say think about ahead of time the 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 one thing that you really want to be sure of is that you're going to have enough to content to deliver on. Uh, releasing a show on whatever schedule you are going to release it on. Now, yeah, you're doing this for your business as essentially a marketing tool. I know I'm sort of genericizing it, but you're, you know, we're, we're talking about adding podcasting to your business, not getting into the business of podcasting. If you wind up in the business of podcasting after the fact, that's great. Like, but, but what we're talking about here is just taking what you're doing in your business and adding podcasting to it. So you don't necessarily need to do a show every week. You could do a show every month or you could do a yep. show every week for an eight week season. Right. And then, you know, there's no rule that says you have to wait a year to start the next season. Oh yeah. Right? Sure. You, but you say you could do a season. It's eight weeks long. You could even plan out in advance what the episodes are going to be. Uh, you know, once you get into it, it'll become a whole lot easier. But like anything, right. you know, you start out, like, OK, let's commit to what we know we can do. Go do those eight weeks, put them out there. You can feature them on your website repeatedly. Right. You can always yeah. go and refer people back. Hey, this week a thing happened and it reminded me of what we talked about in episode for season one of our podcast, you should That's listen right. to it, right? And and you can go back to that, and then whatever it could be a year later, but it could also be three months later that you say, "Great, it's time for season two. And yeah, now, you, you, you could know, even do a tutorial, right? Yes, I mean, things about right. like, hey, 
We solved that problem back. Uh, we did a podcast on it back at this date. Let me send you a link and you can listen to our technician talking about how he fixed this issue. A, a very, very powerful ways to use this content over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. I have a few more ideas too, uh, Dave, but I think you want to jump in and talk about our awesome sponsors. I do. Uh, The first sponsor that I want to talk about today is the alternative board or like we like to call it tab. You know, as business owners, our employees expect us to have all the answers right now. Sometimes you listen to the small business show to get some answers. Right. And maybe we help. But Sometimes you need a sounding board and someone to go to with your business related questions. And that's what tab is for the alternative board, a group of business leaders in your area that you can turn to for valuable advice. And they've been doing this for close to 30 years, helping CEOs and owners of privately held businesses. Each board is made up of local non-competing business leaders. You meet together for four hours a month and you talk about whatever you need to talk about. You help other people. They help you. Plus, you get one on one business coaching to help build your business plan and strategy. And you've got somebody that's going to kind of give it to you straight because they're not on your payroll. You know, they're there to help you not tell you that you're great so that you pay them the next time. You know, like this, you, you need someone other than your employer to be your sounding board and that's what makes the alternative board make sense and one of their surveys shows that their members surpass the average sales revenue of privately held businesses by two and a half times so like there's some real help here and 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 trust us like this is a this is a good concept you 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 need something like this for your business so get the support you need and find out if there's a tab board seat available in your area. Now, we have a special URL for you. Go to thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. That's thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. And our thanks to the Alternative Board for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor is Text Expander. Text Expander, man. Like, I don't even know. We just talked to Greg Scown uh, <laughs> we last week. Uh, at smile and I like there's you should go listen to that interview, but you should also be using text expander in your business. We've been talking about it so much lately. It's hard to, to believe that maybe you haven't checked it out yet, but we get it. You're busy. We said it at the beginning of the show. We're busy too. There's a lot of things I would like to do. Uh, and maybe you haven't checked out text expander yet. Well, take the opportunity, go to text expander.com slash podcast. You can sign up there They will give you 20% off of your first year just by going to textexpander.com slash podcast. As Greg said, they ask you where you actually heard about it from. So they'll help you drill down and, you know, you can pick small business show from that list. At least we hope you would. Text Expander is going to let you take all of those bits of text, addresses, directions, customer service responses, long replies, short replies, Put them into Text Expander. Now, you don't have to worry about finding them in your sent folder from the past email that you sent. They're right there in Text Expander. You can sync them with all your team members or all of your devices. And when you need one, you just click on it or you type a little shortcut and out it comes. That way, you know, it's accurate. You know, it's what you wanted and it's exactly right. And it happens so quickly. So go check it out. Textexpander.com slash podcast. Our thanks to Text Expander. For sponsoring this episode, those are some good sponsors, man. I agree. I know. Both we're, of them. We're yeah, lucky people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We yeah. are. Okay, so more topics to discuss. I, I talked about this eighty twenty rule, and I'm, and I'm not a, I'm not firmly sold on that. But I think that certainly you want to obviously be talking about your products and services, um, but. Perhaps uh, you you kind of frame it less facts and more story. You remember you're you're you having this narrative, and so not all the specific you know little tiny details about it, but but uh, in a more broader sense, um, you know new products and service announcements, things you're doing, uh, customer stories related to using your products and services. You know, and certainly customer testimonials are all great things to talk about that are interesting and, uh, and, you know, people want to listen to them. The 
the other thing is, I think you need to talk about your your team, the people that work for you that really make the magic happen. Uh, not only is are you sharing stories that people like to hear about, but it's a great you know way to kind of recognize your employees. And hey, I want to have you come on the show this week. Uh, you, you know, you did this thing or whatever. This is you know can be kind of a reward to come on and get a little exposure. Everybody likes to talk about them themselves. Absolutely. Um, yeah, right. Uh, and so, you know, maybe you have somebody on each episode or every other episode, something like that. And maybe you let them talk about problems that they've solved using your product or services or customer service, that kind of thing. Just, you know, any kind of customer interaction. And I, and I would mix this stuff up again. Um, I, I don't think I'd have a really long single episode. Uh, I have, you know, one of the things I want to mention, you know, maybe having 10 minute episodes, 15 minutes longer, certainly as you get, you get going, if, if you're comfortable and it, and it sounds, uh, you know, it's interesting, you want to keep talking about it, but you don't have to have these, you know, lengthy episodes to get rolling and you can break up these little snippets, uh, you know, a, a story about the business, something about a product and service, and maybe a visit from an employee or a customer, customer testimonial. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have. Okay. So I'm going to throw you a curveball. Uh, okay. Because we're friends here. Uh, yes. Okay. You have this uh, this business that you started a few years ago. In fact, you talked about it here on the show as you were starting it from your phone. You've got this, yep. this the Shannon's Closet on Poshmark, right? <laughs> right, right. So, it, which is great. Uh, sure. It's okay that I mentioned the name of it, right? You've mentioned that before on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's on Poshmark. It's Rebounded. Uh, R-E-B-O-U-N-D-E-D. If you search for Rebounded, you'll find our store up there. Okay, there you go. Yep. So- yep. It would make sense that you could do a, po- a, a a podcast about this business, but you are, I, I know you and your wife work on this together. I don't know if you would do the podcast with her or if you would do it solo, but what kind of topics would you talk about on, on this show? Just to, just to have sure. a real world example here. Yeah. Yeah. So you could talk about what's trending uh, on Poshmark, how to get started, um, you know, to, how to set up your social media connections. I mean, there's a, a wealth of information, uh, you know, what, uh, what's selling the best, uh, in your store. Um, you know, what do you see happening with certain brands? I mean, it, it just on and on and on. Oh, if you just great. sit down and yeah, think man. about it, yeah. there's always ways to come up with topics. Now, my, my shift has been a little bit different because now we've had some success and the experiment, I think, worked pretty well. And now what we're working on is ways to help other people succeed on on Poshmark and onboarding businesses and, and you know, creating some content for small businesses. So, matter of fact, we've talked about starting a podcast to help uh, onboard those small businesses. So the topics are endless if you just think about it for a little bit. I, and, and that's why I wanted to put you on the spot with this, to, just to show that if you just stop for a second and or it's, don't stop, don't think about it, just let the yeah. ideas roll. There's yeah. plenty of things to talk about. And like you said, your your pot, your episodes could be, you know, five to 10 minutes long. There's nothing Absolutely. wrong with that. And tip of the day, <laughs> whatever it is. One thing I would recommend for someone starting a podcast now is think about video. There is, especially if you're doing, you know, a 10 minute or less podcast, there is so much interest on YouTube right now. And so many yeah. people, you, you know, if, if, if you are out there and you haven't got, gotten caught in YouTube world where you're just going from one you know thing to the other and suddenly you know four hours have gone by, well, lucky you, right? But but there are those of us that 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 you know occasionally that happens to. I I haven't really done it for four hours, but sure, I certainly get lost on there. And if your shows are you know in that less than ten minute length you may wind up just getting in front of people that otherwise you would never have found you. So, yeah. and, and there's nothing you have to do, like just record when you record your podcast, put a camera on your face and make sure your background is okay. It doesn't need to be pristine. You don't need to be in front of a green screen. You can be in your bedroom. You can be in your office. Just yeah, make sure walk around your warehouse, yeah, you know, go out, go out to the job site, maybe at a it. client's place, any right. of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. add and you can also and, and, and then also release the audio, right? You can yeah, put it up as audio and that. video and you're good to go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I think it's great. And I think the, um, you know, the key to getting started 
is like everything else. You just have to start. And I know it's like, oh, it's one more thing. I don't have time, whatever. So again, maybe you don't do it. Maybe someone else can do it. And we're talking short little snippets here of content that you can use over and over and over on your website, on your in your social media channels, uh, LinkedIn, on YouTube. Uh, all that, all this stuff is, you know, you can set up a library of content that you can push out there uh, to capture maybe an audience that you haven't connected with yet, but just start. And I, I think that when we first started the small business show, one of the things, Dave, you said, Hey, we just need to start recording. We're not going to release it publicly. I think if you look back, our first episode was actually like our fourth episode, yeah, right? That's right. And I didn't know anything about it. Uh, I, I still don't know much, but I mean, I certainly knew a lot less uh, 227 episodes ago. Uh, and so that really helped me kind of get my feet on the ground and get comfortable talking in front of the microphone and pacing. Uh, yeah. Cause you can just make, you, know, you just go and make some yeah, mistakes. You're the only go. one that's going to hear it. In fact, even as we record right now, if something went sideways, like I asked Shannon about, about, you know, doing a podcast for his Poshmark business. It, he might have said to me, oh, dude, dude, we can't talk about that on the show. Right, right. Like, OK, <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Know. Like you, you you, can even now, four years in, we can still just take chances and go with it because no one's hearing it until we decide, OK, yeah. they can hear it. You, yeah. Until you publish it. Right. And, <sighs> you know, like what we do on the show, there's not, uh, you know, much production values in it. You know, we're going to post some links in the show notes here that'll help you get started. So it's not a tremendous effort. I mean, if you're recording 10 or 15 minutes of content, you can have that ready to post in, in five minutes. Yep. So, you know, the barriers are, are just not there. And I think it's a great thing to try. I think consistency is, is really important. Don't try to do one every day, or maybe you can't even do it every week. Maybe it's once a month, but you know, if you did one biweekly, let's say at the end of the year, you'd have 24 episodes of content that you could repurpose and use in different ways. You could have it running in their lobby of your building. Uh, I mean, just on and on and on. And I think it's a, a really worthwhile thing to try out. If you already do one, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co. If you're thinking about doing one, you have questions, that same email, we'll be glad to answer what you have. Um, before we go today, one thing I'd love for to ask folks to do if you enjoy the show, go leave us a review. It's a one of the number one things you can do to help us out. Go to businessshow.co slash review. and It'll take you over to the Apple podcast directory and you can leave a review for us. Yeah. Thanks for remembering to do that, man. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Got to yeah. do it more. No. We, good, yeah. 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 Ask. We all need to leave those reviews, please. It, it, it truly does help us. It, it takes you a couple of minutes. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get you right to the form, but but that businessshow.co slash review link will get you as close as we possibly can. And then just click on open an Apple podcast and, and there you go. So, yeah, you should be able to yeah, read from there. Cool. All right, man. That's yeah. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. We appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, it's good stuff, and uh, you know, keep living that charmed life. And if you do have a podcast for your business, tell us about it. We would love to listen, and maybe we'll even share it in the show. There you go. 